than we surrender our lives before your presence, Lord, in this hour. We rejoice, we worship you, and we exalt your name, Lord. We want to praise you and worship you in spirit and in truth, God. That your presence be moving with freedom in the midst of your people, of your sons and daughters that worship you. Regardless of the adversities and difficulties, we worship you, Lord, because we cannot put our sight in the natural things, but in the sovereign God, to whom we have sung, you are great. Thank you for this time so wonderful that you allow us to enjoy and rejoice before your presence, Lord. The fact that today we are before you is thanks to your mercy and your goodness, Lord. That never we forget, Lord, that always in our hearts be a heart that are thankful 24 hours a day. You have the control of everything, Lord. You have the control of everything, Father. We bless your holy name in this hour. To you be all the glory and the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Let's give a strong applause to the Lord in this hour. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Very well, brethren. You may be seated. I want to welcome all the ones that are here and the ones that are watching us also live through the internet. May God bless greatly your lives. I want to thank to each one of you that have been praying. I have been a bit sick last week. Thanks God I have recovered. I was uh, sharing on Tuesday that was holidays here in the Canary Islands. I was sharing the, in the activity that we had, uh, the activity for families, the precious activities that we were, sons and uh, daughters with the parents, and I was sharing the word. And in the evening, I also was sharing to the group of men of group three of the virtual church. So I'm better, I'm well, brethren. Thanks to God, because truly I was quite sick for a few days, but I asked you to be praying for my son Isaac, that is the one that is a bit sick. He says that he contag I gave him the virus, but you know how it is when we are in a household, practically all of us get sick, but the Lord takes care of all things. I want to send greetings to you from the pastor. They had the first event yesterday, an event that was precious, extraordinary, there was a lot, lots of persons in that place. They were singing, praising the Lord, sharing the word, enjoying one from uh, each other, knowing each other, because there are still many brethren that do not know each other. They have seen each other through the internet, but they didn't know each other personally. The pastor was telling me this morning that there were brethren that have done a lot of kilometers to be able to be in these events. You know that the USA, uh, it's uh, easy to do kilometers because here in the Canary Islands you go for an hour and it seems a lot. There they do a lot of kilometers, the same as in the mainland, but I believe, brethren, that when you want to look after the blessing, you move wherever you have to go. Do you believe it? Do you agree? So they are having a time that is extraordinary. Let's keep praying for the pastor. Also that he has a, a, a pain in his ear. So let's God have the control of everything and for him also to enjoy this time in the USA with all our brethren. This week also is going to be traveling also Pastor Alberto to Brussels. Are, he's going to be leaving tomorrow. As he was here these days, I asked him for him to share the word. He's going to bring the word today. So I invite you for you to come in front. When we end, we are going to be praying for him also, for him to be an instrument in the hands of the Lord with our brethren in Brussels. Let's prepare to receive the word. Amen. Many thanks, Anderson. Hello. Very well. Greetings from my wife that tomorrow we are going to Brussels with the brethren there. And I hope it's going to be a time, of, a beautiful time. Also, please be praying for us, for God to use us in those lands that are cold. For someone from the Canary Islands, they find it too cold. But if we are told to go there, we go with big jackets, with warm clothes, and little used to wear those clothes, but we do it. I wanted to share this evening a portion of the word of the Old Testament 
that to me always have called my attention because is there like nobody speaks about that portion and it could have changed all the history of humankind. It's in second book of Chronicles, chapter 22, if we can stand up to read this portion afterwards, we sit down, second Chronicles, chapter 22, verse 10. We are gonna learn from some persons or remember some persons because many of you for sure know some persons, some good, and others not so good. The Bible does not only speak about the good ones, but also about the ones that did evil, and it says the word of God. In the in Second Chronicles, chapter 22, verse 10, now when Achaliah, the mother of Achaziah, saw that her son was dead, she rose and destroyed all the royal offspring of the house of Judah. But Jehoshaphat, the king's daughter, took Hoash, the son of Asaiah, and stole him from among the king's sons who were being put to death, and placed him and his nurse in the bedroom. So Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Horam, the wife of Jehoiada the priest, for she was the sister of Akasia. He hid him from Ataliah so that she would not put him to death. He was hidden with them in the house of God six years while Ataliah reigned over the land. Amen. We are going to read till here. Close your eyes. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you because we can enjoy a bit. Thank you because we can delight in your word. We pray in the name of Jesus that while your word is being taught, is being preached, Lord, that the wonders, the signs, and the wonderful things that your word says and promises that can do for it to happen this evening in our lives. Thank you for everything you are doing, but most of all, thank you for everything you are going to do. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. How many have listened about this person? Satalia, Cosías, Josabet, Hoyada, Sam. Many for sure have listened about this. Let me put you in context, into context so you know what is happening here. The things in Israel for this time were bad. It's not that they were only bad, but they were from bad to worse. There, not, there was not much solution for the country. For a part, the country was separated, was divided, was broken into parts. The kingdom has separated. You know the story? When after Solomon, the kingdom was separated and divided, and it started to be part of the kingdom of the north, also called the kingdom of Israel. Sometimes you read the kingdom of Israel or the kingdom of Judah, because there were two kingdoms. Then there was the kingdom of the south, that is also known as the kingdom of Judah. And it's not that not only there was no unity, but also the kings that were in one part and the other, in the south and in the north, in Judah and in Israel, they were from bad to worse. There was not a king that was good for this time. All of them were taking the country to idolatry, among other things. They were corrupted. Each king that was placed, that king was worse. And the Bible says, and this king did the bad thing before the eyes of the Lord. Look at the, in the north was a cap, the bad a cap in Israel that his wife, his name was, her name was Jezebel, the evil Jezebel. Centuries later, it is spoken about her, the spirit of Jezebel, this evil woman that tried to kill even the, to the great prophet Elijah, a worshiper of Baal she was, idolaters. And in the other part, don't think it was better. In Judah was uh, the king Cosias, that was the son of Horam and Ataliah. So for you to know who Cosias was, I'm going to speak to you about his parents. 30 seconds. Horam was a king that killed all his brothers. And the Bible says that he did the evil before the eyes of the Lord. For you to know who was the father of Cosias, his name, Anna, a man that because he wanted the throne, he killed all his brothers. Um, the, spa, the wife of this man was Ataliah. Ataliah was the daughter of Akab and Jezebel. So imagine that mixture, explosion, that evilness that was in that family. 
When Horam dies, he dies of a sickness that is very bad. The Bible enters in details, maybe not very nice. The intestines came out of him. We are not going to go into that for you to have an idea how bad this man was. When Horam dies, his son, Okosai, is put in the kingdom. But this king only is king for a year. Only a year is a king. And only this little time of a period, this little time, because the Bible says that his own uh, mother, Atalaya, in a moment gives an advice, and this advice was for his destruction. He says in Second Chronicles chapter 22, verse 4, he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Acab, for they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. Okosaya was wrong. He died. He ended wrongly because he followed bad advices. This man uh, followed the evil advice of his mother and lost everything. It's incredible all that the Bible speaks about the advices. How important it is to have good advisors and counselors close to us because a bad advice can be for our destruction. To follow a bad advice of someone, even though they give it to you with the best intention, can be for our destruction. I know that sometimes there are advices that are nice, that maybe there are advices that you like to hear, you like for you to be told certain things, but you know that they are not the correct advices. You have to form yourself and have a good team of counselors beside you to know who you can ask for an advice. I remember once that somebody called me uh, because a matrimony was discussing, Pastor, come house, because this one and the others is discussing, and there we go, Damaris and me to that household to see if we can bring some peace to mediate a little bit, uh, to bring how peace to that matrimony. And when I arrived, I remember they said, uh, the mother-in-law said, tell them to separate them. So I'm glad they did not follow the advice of the mother-in-law. Sometimes the mother, with the best intentions, they gave us bad advices. Some persons, the Bible says that when we are gonna, we are gonna be wise when we follow good advices. The mother of the mother, the mother of the king, Natalia, advised his son for him to go into a war that had nothing to do with him, that he didn't have to do anything with him, and go there, go to that war, and logically, Okosaya goes into that war that had nothing to do with him, and he dies. This simply is the context for you to have an idea what was happening here. What do you believe that Atalia did when Okosaya died? Died, think for a moment, what do you think this mother does when his son, that was the king of Israel, dies in a war? You could say, well, for sure that she did a funeral for him, for sure she cried for few many days and she dressed in dark for a long time, for sure that maybe she did, I don't know, maybe walk, may walk the whole people before the, um, the body of his uh, son to uh, give honor. The Bible says in Second Chronicles 22, verse 10, now then when Atalia, the mother of Asaiah, saw that her son was dead, she rose and destroyed all the royal offspring of the house of Judah. Once uh, his son dies, Atalaya starts to kill all the descendants, all the offspring, his sons, grandsons, all the offspring. That was this evil woman starts to kill. And you know why she did this? Because in the old times, the crown of Israel was only given from father to sons. It's not that a person would come up and say, oh, you seem you are a king, let's proclaim it king. It was not like this. In the last, in the past, it was from parents to sons. And Natalia did know that she eliminated of the, all the offspring. She killed all the sons and all her grandsons and all the offsprings of her. She could be the queen. The anxiety for power that she had made her do such a horrible thing. That desire of govern, that desire of being queen, made her kill her own sons and grandsons. But in the midst of this craziness, in the midst of this war, that this woman goes against her own family, something happens that says only one verse, and many go by, and it says that a sister of Okosaya, but Heshabeth, the king's daughter, took Joas, and seeing what, what her mother was doing, she had time to hide a, a little son of Okosia that did not have any value, called Josh, and had time to hide him. Atalia killed all her family to become queen. And you know what? 
Atalaya uh, managed to do it. She sat on the throne seven years. She was the queen, this evil woman, seven years after killing her own sons, after killing her own grandsons, this woman now was si man, this woman was sitting over the kingdom of Judah. The evil, evil uh, daughter of Jezebel was the one that was over the country. But you know the worst of all? You know the worst was not the ring that she took the country to. Don't think it was because at the end it was, was not one king, it was the other that did things wrongly. Uh, uh, regardless of the name, Akab, Jezabel, if not one was the other that ruined the country, the worst of it w was not the people that she killed. But don't take me wrong, we all gonna die. Yes, she killed, she was very evil. If they didn't die that day, that way, they would die another way. But the worst of everything is that when the coming of Atalaya to the power, the promise of God for the first time was not uh, done was not fulfilling that time when Atalaya gets to the throne. Uh, God uh, uh, did not uh, fulfill his promise there. And what promise was that? I will explain it to you. When the king was David, everything was different in the country. There was no division. There was only one kingdom. Israel was joined. There was no kingdom in the north, north, south. It was only one kingdom, the kingdom of David. David managed to uh, join all the nation of Israel politically and spiritually. He managed to bring unity to all the country. Not only he brought unity, but he managed to get something of value, that it was to recover and bring the presence of God that the Philistines had the stolen for a long time, David took courage, and the first decision that he did as a king, the first decision as a king was to go after the Ark of the Covenant and bring it home, brought the presence of God again to Israel. David conquered everything that was in front of him. It was a perfect warrior. It was a wonderful king. Even though David could not manage the great dream that he had, that he wanted to build the house to his God, he wanted to build the temple, God did not allow it because he was a man of a lot of war, that he had shed too much blood, and God said, no, David, the rest, yes, but not to you, I cannot allow you to do this. But even though he could not build the temple, he left everything, all the resources for his son Solomon to be able to build the temple. David was such a good king that God did a promise. When God from uh, heaven see the kingdom of David, sees the heart of this man, God promised that always would be a descendant of David, as would be a king. There would be always be uh, someone of the lineage of David seated on the throne that would have his own blood, and the people knew that promise. They all knew that God years before had promised that a descendant of David would always be in the throne. In the second book of Samuel, chapter 7, verse 16, says, your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever. Your throne shall be established forever. All knew this promise. But regardless of things going bad, regardless that the kings were doing things wrongly once and another time, they were putting the country in idolatry, corruption, regardless that the country was going from bad to worse, that remnant faithful, that those persons that fear God always could hold on to this promise and say, everything is bad, I know everything is bad, this is reality. But my God has promised that there is a king descendant from David that is going to always be in the throne. It's true that everything is bad. But, but you know, we still have the promise of God, they said, and they hold on to that. The things sometimes go wrong, but when we have the Bible, it's certain that this is, things are going bad, reality says this, but truth is everything, and I have hope. Even though I see another thing, at least I have hope. Even though I see a cabin uh, uh, in the throne or corrupt or bad kings in the throne, at least they said we have the promise of God. We know that always the lineage of David is going to be in the throne. But now it was not like this. Now it seems that God was wrong. Now it looked like that God had failed. Somebody that did not have the blood of David, somebody that was not of the lineage of David, somebody that had nothing to do with the descendants of David nor the kingdom of Judah because came from the kingdom of Israel, from Akab and Jezebel, somebody that had nothing to do with David, now was on the kingdom. God, uh, it seems that God was wrong. 
I can imagine that people opening their Bibles at that time, the Torah, the scripts that they had, those rules of the law. I can imagine each one of them opening their books, the Word of God opening it, and reading that promise, and your house will be firm, and your kingdom forever, and your throne will be established and dear, and they would read it and repeat it. But when they look up, they saw that Atalaya was the queen. One thing is what the word of God said, but something different was what they were living at that moment. They read the promise in their word, but when they raised their eyes, they realized that that was not happening, that the word of God for a reason was not happening there. Can you imagine how the people felt? How many have felt like this? Uh, at a time, you read something in the Bible, a promise, you have promises from God, but when you raise your eyes, you see another reality. God has promised, I don't know, something, but when you raise your eyes, you see Atalai as a king, queen. All the contrary that what God had promised to them, they realized that maybe something, all the contrary is happening to what God promised. And the worst is not this. The worst is that it was impossible to solve this. That situation could not change. There was no way that somebody from the descendant of David could be in the throne because actually herself had killed the sons and grandsons and all the offspring of David. Remember that Ataliah ended in the throne because she herself managed to eliminate all the offspring. It's not something that Ataliah by a strength she crowned herself. That's not that important because at the end, if it was because of Atalaya, somebody else would kill them. But the promise was impossible to be fulfilled. Yeah, the promise was impossible. The people would say it's impossible for God to fulfill his promise because it is not offspring of David. This queen, this bad queen, has eliminated all the offspring of David. Atalaya had killed, eliminated all the offspring. That's how some believers believe or feel. Believe me, there is nothing more discouraging for a Christian than to believe or think that God has failed. I know that it's painful when somebody fails a promise, and more if that person is somebody that is important in your life or close to you, or how bad is that a husband fails you? What a pain, how your heart breaks when it's your wife, the one that does not fulfill a promise, that promise that she did in front of a pastor of our I will be with you till they put us apart, and for a reason, maybe she's not fulfilling that promise. How painful it is. How painful it is that a son or a daughter face the promise that betrays you, that a son or daughter, I don't know, has not fulfilled what uh, one day you as parents, you got together and made a, a promise. How bad that a brother from church fails you, that somebody that seems to be faithful towards you is against you now. How hard, how is your heart is when somebody fails you, somebody that is close to you fails you. All of that is very painful. A friend from a childhood, all of that is painful. But at the end, understand me, we are all humans and we are all wrong. And yes, she failed, he failed, I also failed. But God, to fail God? That God fails you? That's the way the people felt them. They felt that the God of heaven had not fulfilled his promise. I believe that sometimes we have been able to feel like this. Maybe sometime God promised something in his word, and we read it, and we read it, and we learn it by heart. But when we look up, up, we see all the contrary. Maybe God promised healing. There are texts like the ones that are in the Old Testament. I'm your healer. Isaiah 53, because of your wounds, we are healed. You keep advancing in the New Testament, praying one for the other for you to be healed. There are dozens of promises of healing. But when we see raise our side, we are sick. Atalia is being the queen. God promised restoration in matrimony. The Bible says that God makes people live in family, that love never stops. Everything will pass, but lo love won't pass. Paul said, and we believe it and treasure it in our heart when we read these promises. But when we raise our sight up, Atalaya is being the queen. Our matrimony is from bad to worse. 
God promises us progress. The Bible says you will be head, not tail. You will not ask for anything. I wish for you to be prosperous. A lot of more things, but when we raise our side, we are stunned. We don't reach the end of the month. We don't cannot put our head up. God promised salvation for a family member, and God has told you, you are your house will be safe, and I promise this way, the other. Every time you listen to his word, you read the word, he promised salvation for some of yours. But when you raise your sight, you see that that family member is more rebel in the things of the Lord. You see that the family member is worse, more departing more from the things of the Lord. God promised to give you the end that you expect, But when you raise your hand, your uh, aside, you realize that the life you have, you don't like it. Sometimes it seems that the promises of God are not fulfilled. Well, yes, I know. We take effort in believing. We take effort in follow, keep having and treasuring the word of God like the only guide in our lives. But how hard is when we raise our sight, the one we see in the throne is Atalaya. The one we see reigning is all the contrary to what God has promised to us. I believe that something similar had to happen to Abraham, the father of the faith. God, in a moment of his life, promised a son and says, you are going to be father. See the stars? Maybe that he was not uh, was not uh, sleeping. And can you count the stars? No, your descendants are going to be like this. You're going to be a father. Well, I'm old. Trust in me. You're going to be a father. The Lord said, but time went by, years went by, and the son did not come. And yes, Abraham is the father of the faith. Abraham believes everything. He says, yes, I know. God has told me, Sarah, okay, I trust in the Lord. But years went passing by. Abraham was a man of faith, so much that he's known as the father of the faith, but time was running against him. Abraham was nearly 100 years old. I don't want to go into details, but science, medicine, oh, indicates that from 50 years, 60 years, man, it's hard. He's not a 20 years old boy. He's not like before. Abraham believed. Abraham took his word and says, I'm going to be father. But there was something in him that was not working anymore. But now, now I believe, but now how is this going to happen? How is this going to happen? But the Bible says in Romans 4, verse 18, that Abraham, in hope against hope, he believed, so that he might become a father of many nations, according to that which had been spoken. So shall your descendants be. Regardless, everything was against him, everything, even his wife, and said, I don't know if God told, spoke to you or not. I don't know. That promise, Abraham, are you sure he did not tell you a spiritual sons? Even Sarah doubt. Regardless of nobody not believing in him, the Bible teaches that Abraham kept believing, even with a hundred years old, because I know that for you this story is common, but being the skin of Abraham with hundred years, Abraham kept believing. Even though we see everything against us, we have to keep believing hope against hope. How many say amen? Do you know how the story of Atalia ends? It's true, it's true that Atalaya kings all the offspring. His her sons, uh, grand uh, sons, she eliminated everything that had to do with David. But if you pay attention to the detail at the beginning, I gave you a verse that I said to you that the Bible uh, only uh, has few words for this, something that just goes by. But this could have happened the story of humankind. There the Lord says, and the Lord says, this happened and goes to another subject. If you realize, I told you at the beginning, In the second Chronicles, chapter 22nd, verse 10, now when Ataliah, the mother of Asaiah, saw that her son was dead, she rose and destroyed all the royal offspring of the house of Judah. But the bats from God should have a preaching like this, the bats from God. But Jehoshaphat, the queen's daughter, took Joash, the son of Ataliah, Asaiah and stole him from among the king's sons who were being put to death and placed him and his nurse in the bedroom, a daughter of Ataliah, Osabed, in the midst of that killing of the craziness of her mother. 
She's in shock. What are you doing, mother? You're killing your sons. You're killing your grandsons. But this woman uh, was with anxiety of power. She wanted to be a queen. She didn't care about anything. And this woman, the Bible says that she took the little one, Joa, as a baby and hide him. She had time to hide the little king, son of the queen, the king. Someone that Sam not even needed, not even knew the name. Joash, she took the kid and she hid it in the temple under the care of the priest Hoyada. And while the people were thinking that God had failed, while all the people thought that God had not fulfilled his promise, that God did not have the power that he said he had, in the house of God, was growing a boy that would show that the promises of God always are fulfilled. When all the people was in desperation, doubting and saying, it's impossible that my God that do what he wants once more is impossible because there are no descendants in the house of God was the solution. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, for as many as are the promises of God in him, they are yes. For as many as are the promises of God in him, they are yes. Therefore, also through him is our amen to the glory of God through us. How did Joas become go to the throne? How did the promise of God uh, happen? It's told to us in chapter 23. Uh, Second Chronicles, verse 1, Now in the seventh year, Jehoiada strengthened himself and took captains of hundreds, Azariah, the son of Heroam, etc., etc. The seventh year, Jehoiada strengthened himself. Another version that I like a lot also, it says in the seventh year in the, of the queen of Atalia, the priest Jehoiada uh, decided to act and uh, to courage, this priest had what was necessary for the promise to become true. And he decided to act, even though everything was against him. Even though the queen herself of the country was against him, he took courage and started to act because he understood that the promises of God are in him. Yes and amen through us. Do you understand this? The promise of God is yes and amen. And, and the verse, how it says, through us for the glory of God. He understood that for the glory of God, the word of God to be fulfilled is through us. What God, God will do, yes, but what will you do? Through you, that my word is going to be yes and amen for my glory, God says. There is something that we have to do. And he did a great job to go against the enemy, to go against Atalaya, and he managed to conquer her because the word of God does not die and does not lie, nor the promise of God fail. Do you know what was the end of this story? The end of this short story is that Atalaya was conquered. Atalaya was removed from the throne. Not only she was removed from the throne, but in her place was placed an offspring of David called Joas. And see this verse, that for me is great. Second Chronicles 23, 11. Then they brought out the king's son and put the crown on him and gave him the testimony and made him king. And he and his sons anointed him and said, Long live the king. Church, this is the end of all promises. Long live the king. Even though everything is against us, even though we read one thing and we see another thing at the end, in all promises we will end up saying, long live the king. Even though it seems that there is no solution, even though it seems that you're going the contrary, that God has promised to you, believe me that at the end you will see, you will say, long live the king. If God has promised it, if God has established, believe it that all at the end, we will say, long live the king. 
even though everything may be dark and since does not make sense, seems that is against you for it not to happen. The promises of God have sure, be sure that at the end you will be saying, long live the king, long live the uh, king of kings, Jesus, to you be all the glory, Lord. Not only God fulfilled his promise that the lineage of David uh, will be in the kingdom of Israel, but through Koash was born our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only God fulfilled his promise once more as always, but a descendant of this man from it came our Savior, as is known, the son of David. Maybe you are now living in uncertainty like the people live for years to read one thing in the world, but when you raise up your sight, you see all the contrary. But I want you to know that you have to be like Abraham and you have to believe hope against hope. Always believing, believing. Even though you see the contrary, please believe hope against hope. The Bible says, where will my help come from? I don't know from whom, from sure the Lord, from where I don't know, but I know for sure from the Lord. Everything is so difficult. From where will it come? I don't know. I don't know how God is going to do for this promise that seems impossible for it to be fulfilled. But I know, what I know for sure is that the promises of God are in yes and amen. Maybe it has come up an atalai against you. Maybe somebody or something wants to destroy the promises of God in your life have come against you. But believe me that above Atalia is our God. Regardless of how strong it seems that Atalia above that person is God. Maybe you have been for years waiting for that promise. It's impossible in your life as the people was waiting six years, six years waiting and saying, and now what? God has abandoned us? God has lied to us? But that time is a time of believing. It's a time of hoping in God, of keep trusting in the mighty word of God. Because remember, and never forget this, the promises of God are yes and amen. And at the end, yes or yes, you will end up saying in all promise, long live the king. Stand up, church, and let's worship the king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Let's worship him tonight. Maybe you are in a time as these people was living in desperation and uncertainty. But church, open your heart for this seed to go in and give fruit. The promises of God are in yes and amen. And even though today it seems something impossible, at the end, all together, we are going to be saying, long live the king, long live Jesus, long live the king of kings, to him be the glory and the worship for ever and ever, forever and ever, long live the king, long, long live the king. There in that little house of God was uh, growing the promise of God, always in the house of God is are being born our promises close to God are always the promises I don't want to entangle you but Hoyada when he wanted to put Joas in the throne had to do a great strategy he could not uh, took Joas and present it there no if you read the story he had to do a great military strategy that teach us that we have to be wise to battle for our promises. It's true that yes and amen, but it's through you that the battles that you believe, hope against hope, even though you are seeing all the contrary, please believe hope against hope. And soon, I don't say it by myself, it's not a, it's, I'm not promising it, it's promising it, the Lord. Long live the King. Your promise has been fulfilled once more. Thank you, my God. Thank you because your word is truth. Thank you because even though men fail us, even though circumstances become difficult, you never fail to us. You are the God that never failed to his promises. Thank you, I give you, for each promise that you have given to us through your word. Thank you, my God, because we trust in you always, Lord. And we want to be like Abraham, believing hope against hope, knowing that your promises are yes and amen, and there is nothing to doubt. Thank you, my God. 
We bless you tonight. Worship to him, church, even though you are in that time of waiting or uncertainty, worship him. Worship God, even though you are not seeing, even though you are not seeing the solution to that problem, worship him because soon you are going to be saying, long live the king. Worship him, church. Raise a worship tonight and worship him. Worship him. Do not stop. Do not allow for the problem to close your lips. Do not allow that the anguish or anxiety close your lips. Do not allow it. Worship him. Say in the midst of the problem, I love you. I worship you. I believe in you. I believe in your word. Hope against hope. I believe in what you have promised to me, Lord. I believe. I believe in that restoration. I believe that that person is going to come to your feet. I believe in each one of your words that you have promised in your word. I believe. This is why I worship you, Lord. I worship and I bless you even though years go by and I don't see, even though circumstances keep advancing and I don't see as Abraham, I believe hope against hope. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Thank you, thank you, Lord. You are so good, Lord. You are so good that always fulfill what you promise. We bless you, Lord.